This is something that Nikola Tesla said that applies to so many things and all the sort of ignorance and stupidity that I see on a daily basis and uh, other people posting things. Let's hear a quote from Nikola Tesla. This is, of course, in regards to his science, his field of study, excuse me. Today's scientists have substituted mathematics for experimentation. They wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relation to reality. Now, one of the fundamental things that none of you people were ever taught in school is that there's observation and then there's explanation. Okay? People like to uh, say things, but they don't know how to explain things. Now, one of the things that uh, were um, observed, like uh, um, like the ancient Egyptians, we knew that their uh, math was incredible, and of course their ability to build stuff was far superior to anything we even have today. We, we just don't even know how they, they did it, especially uh, make uh, perfect, super deep uh, core drills that were perfectly symmetrical, as that... Uh, their explanation for their observations in nature sometimes uh, had really, really insane um, religious explanations. The same thing is true in science, uh, which is based in particleism or atomism. And I encounter the same sort of BS in photography. Someone will constantly quote DxO mark, which has absolute DxO mark. By the way, it contains no images whatsoever at all. It, I mean, it is just an insane website of of math, and it's nonsense. I mean. If you were to believe that, then my, uh, believe that crazy website, then you would think that uh, my medium format GFX should perform like a bazillion times better than my crop sensor camera. And that, that's just not true. Uh, you know, this, that's insane. Some people will sit there and measure stuff. It's like, oh, yeah, it's the area. It's like, well, the area is bigger. Like, for example, full frame is 2.25 times larger area. But area has nothing to do with exposure, nor anything to do with dynamic range. But you see, that's something that's incalculable to math. The actual image output, like dynamic range, yeah, the exposure. No, well, it's it's got to be better. It's bigger. It's like, oh, that's the math. The facts, of course, show, and anybody that owns full frame and crop sensor, for example, know that uh, those statements are ludicrous and insane. But specifically, you know, diverting back from photography, applying this to other things. Modern science is not science, which is the quest for truth in the true uh, Platonic and Aristotelian sense. However, I'm no fan of Aristotle, that schmuck. Um, they are mathematicians, and mathematicians, by definition, are only interested in things that are demonstrable and uh, empirical and can be counted. You see, math is about counting crap and measuring stuff. For example, fields are not things, you know. Fields are not particles, either. Um, Four Maxwellian field equations are only for determining outputs, you know, as measured in ohms and volts and watts, amperes. Maxwellian field equations never define a field. They only tell you what a field does with a given effect over a period of time with a given vector. That's all the field equations do. That's used for designing 100% of modern day electronics. But that never defined a field. Um, people uh, love to uh, say a lot of stuff, but they don't know how to explain anything. Um, the photoelectric effect, as observed, and it wasn't observed, it was actually first uh, uh, observed and explained by J.J. Thompson, who called it dielectric lines of, uh, of a force. But uh, the idiot Einstein never got uh, his uh, Nobel Prize for relativity, which has been mostly disproved, because relativity is the reification of something that has no properties. This is why Tesla called Einstein an idiot. He actually called him a fuzzy-haired crackpot. Einstein got his Nobel Peace Prize for the photoelectric effect. Now, his observations were repeatable and accurate, but his explanation was complete BS. This is what people don't understand. Like, if someone were to discover some sort of... And Einstein did not discover that. I would say it was J.J. Thompson. If someone were to discover some sort of new property of fields, and it's like, I've repeated it, and I've got this output, it's like, hey, great, you know... Then they'll write a paper explaining it. Their correct observations and the repeatability of those observations have no connection at all to the explanation. You see, I could observe something happening. It's like, hey, it's a new discovery. And I write a paper about, hey, you're great, you discovered this, everybody sees it now, you know, your observations, input, output, all your math is right. All your math is right. It's like, well, that's true, but that doesn't mean that your explanation is any connection to the truth at all. 
People don't realize that. None of you were taught that in school and college. This is something the ancient Pythagoreans understood really well, is that these are two different things. If I'm observing X, I can mathematically define it as four inches long, two inches wide, X volume, weight, so what? All right, that's, that's wonderful. That's the math. Now, the explanation. This is, of course, where we get the, the notion of uh, someone that knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. There's some people out there that's like, they can count everything, but they don't know the value of anything. It's like love, the soul, hope, faith, freedom. Let's just look at those. They're like the most important things in the goddamn world. Love, the soul, hope, faith, freedom. You know, try to plug that crap into a math equation. It's impossible. These things don't even exist, according to science. Well, there's no math for that. There's no math for that. <laughs> This is what Tesla meant by and large, but he was referring to a specific field of study, i.e. field theory, electricity, dielectricity, magnetism. Today, scientists have substituted math for experimentation. They wander off and they build a structure that has no uh, relation to reality. Nikola Tesla. That applies to so many things. People sit there and measure and count everything. It's like a bean counter. They sit, all they do is calculate things with their calculator. Well, they don't know what anything is. Like, you know, the three blind men that are measuring an elephant. They're all accurate. It's like this one feels like a, a big dish. This feels like a tree trunk measure, touching the elephant's legs. And uh, someone grabbing the tail. This feels like a snake. It's like they're all right. Those are correct observations through their, feet, through their, their tactile feelings since they're blind men, right? It's the three blind men and the elephant. You remember that old, uh, that old uh, thing? But none of them have the totality of picture to be able to explain what the hell of an elephant is, or why it is, or how it is. Um, this applies to so many things. Um, there's the science of photography, for example, and there's the art of photography. Yeah, you know, I'd rather have an awesome picture out of a sh crappy old camera, old film camera, shooting a huge 60, ISO 6400 grain film than, you know, a crappy image out of a 50 megapixel medium format, right? None of us were taught this stuff in school. Modern science is not the quest for truth, it's the quest for quantification. Modern science is atomism and materialism, denotatively and connotatively. Fields are not physical, nor are they particles. You know, Science has never defined a field. Science is all it loves talking about waves. Waves are not things, waves are what something does. There's no such thing as a wave in itself of itself, because a shadow is not a thing either. These are conceptual reifications of posterior attributes, and what that means is that we are reifying something as something, or a principle, or an element, which is not. Like a shadow is not a thing. It's an absence of light. Shadow has no existence. It is predicated on the relation of light versus no light. Space has no properties either, and this is a direct quote from Tesla. Um, reify things that have no... Waves. Waves space, shadows, emptiness, all of these things are concepts created by human beings and they're all the same thing. Space, waves, shadows, and what was the other one? Right, space waves, shadows, something else, right? You know, emptiness, space wave, shadows, emptiness. None of these things are elementally viable. They are not things in and of themselves. You have to have a Pythagorean uh, platonic, uh, a early, a proto-platonic uh, 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 mindset. You don't have to have study. You just have to have your mind geared to think like a Platonist to understand that these things are not things. These are these are uh, attributional relationships set of something due to the absence of something else. There's no such thing as emptiness. Emptiness is empty of something else. There's no such thing as true emptiness either because if you could witness emptiness, then there would be a subject in it that is witnessing it and it is therefore denotatively not emptiness by definition. Damn it. So there's no such thing as emptiness. Pure emptiness anyway. Something is empty of something else. This is the uh, crap I used to debate with... Uh, um, so-called Buddhists all the time, they say, oh, emptiness, you know, anatta. It's, there's no person that's more intelligent on this earth, this earth on the topic of one word, anatta. And I know all of its uh, 772 occurrences. And myself, it's a rupa anatta, veda anatta, sana anatta, sankara anatta, vinya anatta, nama rupa anatta ti. If you say A, B, C, D, E are not X, this is not the denial of X. It is the denial that A, B, C, D, E are not X. 
to say that there are no uh, palm trees in, uh, in uh, Anchorage, Alaska is not a denial of palm trees. You're just saying there's no palm trees there. Um, there's no signal inside the freaking radio. This is the, this is the level of human stupidity. Humans are so unevolved because they can't logically put two and two together. It's like I, there's no signal inside this radio. You know, smash this crap, look for a signal. You know, there's no little people inside your TV. There's no real fire going on in my freaking screen here, is there? Um, <laughs> what does this therefore lead you to the conclusion thereof? This is where we get space, emptiness, shadows, and waves. A wave is not a thing. A wave is what something does. There's no such thing as a wave. People say, a wave. Wave of what? A wave. This is a wave. See that in my hand? So no, that's your hand moving. No, that's a wave. So no, that's what your hand is doing. Stupid. Stupid people. So is there any signal on this radio? No, there's no signal on this radio. Does that is that a denial of a signal? There's no soul in the body. That doesn't mean I'm denying the soul either. Does it? No. People, you see, if you were rich back in the day, like 16th, 15th, 14th century, if you were rich, word, you had the money, <laughs> your little kid, and it was always a man-child, of course, they wouldn't teach girls that sort of stuff. That's just sexist. Yeah, but we're talking about 15th, 16th century. You know, yeah, I was sexist, right. I know it is, but we're talking about the oldest. If you had a lot of money, your little youngin', your little rug rat, they got brought up on a uh, platonic education. You know, like... <clears throat> Some of the day, guys back in the day, like Alexander the Great, you know what he did? He like hung out in his uh, loincloth and his Greek sash out on the cliffs, uh, being schooled on Platonic and Aristotelian logic and thought. That is a real education. Not sitting there and doing homework and going home and like pouring through books and memorizing crap. Okay? Eh, go home and memorize this crap. We're going to have a multiple guest test tomorrow. Well, good. That isn't going to teach me anything. You're just going to have me go home and memorize crap. doesn't teach me how to think. doesn't teach me how to reason, which is, of course, absolutely vital in the real world because you were not taught that crap in school, and neither was I. I had to teach it myself. I knew inherently when I went to school, I was like, these assholes, these teachers are assholes. I am smarter than them. They are older than me. They know more than me, but I fundamentally know that none of these people are anything but assholes. They're stupid. So I'm going to go to the library, and I'm going to find the real knowledge that these schmucks are not teaching me. And that is exactly what I did. That's exactly what I did. Um, you weren't taught this stuff in school. That's what's important. Being able to reason, have a logical mind, being able to discern emotions from facts and logic, you know. It's okay to mix the two for the sake of humor, you know, to be adamant about stuff. It's like, no, you're wrong, and you're, you know, you're an idiot, because everybody's wrong. It's, you know, everybody's, I don't know anything about car repair. There's tons and tons and tons of stuff I have no idea. It's like, I don't know about that, you know. But, uh, whew. What's important is to be a lover of wisdom and knowledge. Of course, it's also important to distinguish knowledge episteme from wisdom or gnosis. It's a different thing altogether to uh, be a lover of ignorance. <laughs> There's a lot of people out there like that. But, uh, yeah. This is the difference between math and a real science. Real science is this, the quest for truth. And uh, you cannot bring math into uh, understanding fields and things that cannot be counted and quantified. Because according to math, you know, if it can't, you know, love, faith, freedom, the soul, these things cannot be quantified. So according to math, which is materialism, you know, because math is about counting crap. When you're counting crap, you're counting materiality. Something that has quantity. But the entire universe and Mother Nature gives the middle finger to that BS because everything in the world and the universe, not just the world, is fields, and fields are not particles, and they cannot be quantified. And Maxwellian field equations have never defined a field, nor has any ever branch of science ever defined a field. When they talk about fields, however, they talk about waves and volts and amperes over a period of time with a given vector. Uh, <laughs> except there's no such thing as waves. Repeat after me. There's no such thing. Yeah, if someone watches this video and type in, there's no such thing as waves, and I'll PayPal you a dollar. 
Let's just type it. There's no such thing as waves because, 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 because a wave is not what something is. A wave is what something is. Scientists love to talk about waves. Like, waves what? Waves. Waves what? Waves. Waves what? Need a parrot that goes, waves, what? waves, 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 waves. <laughs> Good night. If you like these videos, click the link below. If not, tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever makes you happy.